What's up folks, Simulation for the Nation here, I hope you're doing very well. Today, we are going to be showing you in this video how you can make basic edits to maps in Giants Editor. Uh, a lot of people have asked for this, a lot of people who watch any of my content will see that I do like to make frequent changes and little tweaks here and there to maps. So I want to show you how you're going to do that. So before we go too much further, before we get anywhere near this kind of stage, uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and also get Google open because we are going to jump into this and first thing you need to do if you haven't done so already, is get this downloaded and let's have a play with it so what we're going to do is just bring on over uh, a, a, a google page now we've got onto google and we've searched giants Ed editor fs19 download and you're going to use the very first link that pops up here this is the uh giants developer network you're going to click onto there uh, and this allows you it's like a download portal here you need to set, sign up and do so over here in the top right corner where you'll register create an account then you're going to go into downloads and you want to download the latest version of giants editor which in this case we are on version 8.22 once you've got all that done download it as you would any other program there get it all installed and then uh come back hit play and we'll continue on in which should bring you to something uh that looks a little bit like this now we have accessed a specific map here we're using west newton uh and a modern friend of the channel uh has allowed us to jump on and use this one so we're going to have a bit of a play around with it. Now, how do you get to this stage? I hear you asking. Well, let's have a look. What we're going to do is bring in our... Uh, we're going to bring in our folder. Now, this is your, your typical mods folder here, really. Here are all of our mods. You need to extract the mods so you can actually get into it. So it's going to give you a folder that looks something like one of these guys. You're going to click on the folder in question, which brings you up to all of the information surrounding uh, the, the map that you're going to be using. So as you can see, we've got audio, we've got foliage, we've got maps, mod maps, seasons, cell points, textures, vehicles, XMLs, and then a whole lot of different folders, which is where we come into play. What you're going to do is click on this one here, which has like a little yellow G, the giant symbol, and that opens up the uh, i3D file format, which will bring you to this here page. Now, this is where we need to start playing around in the map, really. This is the entire map you can scroll you can move all the way around it to navigate to any which area it will bring you when you open up the map once it's uh if you've used it already it'll always bring you back to the last point that you saved in so that's kind of neat uh but to be able to kind of move around you want to use your mouse uh you're going to click right click on the mouse to kind of rotate and look around like this which is pretty cool uh now but if you want to move around you'll notice that you can't really what you've got to do is use the alt keys on your keypad and then when you press alt Gonna press the right click button and that allows you to if you scroll to the left there allows you to zoom out and if you scroll to the right it allows you to zoom in you want to move sideways then you press both right and left button and then you can move sideways as well that's moving up and down so i will be honest it takes a little bit of time to get used to how it all works uh, how the uh, navigation works there you just get it's something that you'll get comfortable with over time now what we're going to do just to kind of focus in on a specific area really this is just going to be the very basic uh, tutorials of navigation and adding and extracting and moving and importing various different uh, models so we're going to use this little farm here this is alton burn the home of where the our uh, debt free farm series here on west newton actually look, nice little tidy farm plenty of different bits of uh, decoration on here and buildings which you can really have a good play around with so what you're likely, if you're in Giant Editor for any particular reason, it's likely going to be that you're looking to make the change to a specific area within the map that you want. You like on on like let's say a farmyard on a certain map, that, but you just want to remove some things. So there's a few things we can look into doing here. We're going to come over to where all this decoration is. So again, I'm going to press Alt and I'm going to scroll, zoom in really with my um, right click on the mouse button, uh, and then you got all these things around here. Now, all of these little items have a corresponding folder in this cube or in this rectangle menu on the left hand side this is our scene graph and this has everything in here that the map consists of all of the different models have a little place in here some of them are all independent on their own such as these guys here if they have a little plus sign next to them that means uh, it is a group inside that group you can see a whole lot of different things so for example all the gates will look like this it'll have a trigger it'll have the physical gate uh, and there'll be the uh, the post for it as well there. So that's kind of what you're looking to see. Uh, now, if you wanted to, let's say, just add or, or let, in this instance, remove some of this uh, clutter around the farmyard, if you want to make a little bit more space, very simple to do. All you're going to do is left click on the specific item in question. And it highlights it. 
And not only does it highlight it here, but it also brings it up on this line down here. So you can see this is the specific barrel in question. Now, if you want to keep it there, you can move it. You'll see there are three arrows coming off of this model. This is for your X, your Y, and your Z values. So you can, if you want to choose to, if you say, do you know what? I want to keep this. I just want to, it's in my way just a little bit. You can use these arrows. You can click right, left click, sorry, on the mod in question. And then you can, see, once it goes yellow like it does here, you can then move it to your heart's content. Move it wherever you need it to go. Or you can, uh, you can move it back this way as well, pushing it away from you. I'll bring it up closer to you if you want to lower or raise the height then you use this one and up you go nice and straightforward uh however if you want to just completely get rid of it then quite simply when it's highlighted like that you can press the delete key and there she blows she's gone and that means that yeah you can go through your entire maps if you so desired and you can just get rid of all these if i click on this one you'll see it appears here you know, they're usually that models of the same uh, type and same description usually appear in clusters uh, and there's that one as well if i click on the ring feeder you'll see it, it moves this down a little bit but here it is still and then the same thing will probably apply for this guy here now this has two different bits but this has decals and it also has collisions we're not going to go too much into the collision aspect of it th uh, today but it's certainly something we could look into so that's how you're going to make basic changes now that if we kind of zoom out a little bit here we're gonna just span around i did something similar for this little pen here now this didn't have this tree line going around it it was just a little fence off area i put this in because i wanted to be able to kind of fence it off a little bit there so uh yeah put a few trees in you can move like this is a hedgerow here you can see this is a, a, under the um the group for uh for shrubs uh and inside each one of these we have the uh, various different models and aspects so one of them is the uh, has the script in there that stops bales going through that's the collision box you'll see inside there as well that's the very thing but you want to make sure that you move the whole thing around so you can do that you can move it you can make sure it fits in properly you can adjust the angle of it there really kind of adapt any specific aspect of a map in place uh, and yeah it's a nice little option there just to kind of give you a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a personal feel to a map really and you can go through this and do anything you need to. Uh, there's a lot more complexity to a map. Uh, I would recommend if you want to start to learn in depth how to, you know, add animal planes uh, or add any um, any field definitions, things like that. Shy Wizard is a phenomenal resource to do so. Do make sure you go and watch his videos and subscribe to his channel because it is really, really worthwhile. I remember to in time, I will put a link in the description down below to kind of show you how to do that really and what that does look like. Uh, one thing I would uh, preface, be careful if you are going to start to delete things because you can accidentally uh, delete something that can't be, uh, that you may not know that you are deleting and which can cause you errors with loading the map up in the future. So I would strongly encourage that before you do anything else, you do make a backup. Uh, and then, yeah, the best thing I can advise is just to have a bit of a play around. Get used to how this whole navigation works here. Uh, figure out what, what you like and what you don't like and what you like to be able to function with and work with. And then before you know it, Moving around the map just becomes second nature to you, really, and you'll be able to figure out exactly what you need to do, where you need to go, and how you can customize a map to your own unique preferences. Now, there's one more thing I, want, I would like to show you here, and that is showing you how to uh, how you can actually import new sheds, for example. If you want to add a new shed, and that's something I do quite frequently with my system and my, my uh, Let's Play series, you want to kind of give it a new build in there so you can do that very easily you just need to know a where your the file type of your your new building uh what that what that folder consists of and where you're going to store it so for example about this i bring up this is the west newton uh file that we just looked at before but you'll notice this guy here is new this is shed underscore spn so this is a specific shed that was made for me for a different series uh which i very kindly was made by NM Modern and we've used in six ashes. But if we click onto here, you'll see that these are all of the different options for, for sheds. Uh, so we can get into using those. Now there's textures in here uh, and there are all of the different uh, bit, bits and pieces associated with that model. Now, let's say I want to get this stuck on into my map. So what you need to do is bring in this guy right here. This is the i3d file. You want to make sure you've installed this somewhere where you're happy with it for the benefits of this uh, little brief run through we're going to leave it right where it is so what we need to do is import it into the map which is very easy to do you go into file you go into import 
And then you just need to find that very same file we were looking at. So again, we go to shared SFTN and here we go. Uh, it brings, it reduces down all the different objects of which were there and just brings you the most relevant ones. SFTN is what we're going to take. So we're going to click on that one. We're going to go open. G G E or giant center will bring it in at the very bottom there. And there you go. Now it is here somewhere. If we have a look around, I don't, I don't see a shed. It's a very easy way to find it. You're just going to press F. And there we go. So right now it is kind of hidden away underneath the uh, underneath the map at the moment, which is perhaps not so ideal, but there's a way that we can get around that one as well. Uh, so we're just going to get ourselves back up to uh, the main farm there, get ourselves back above ground. There we go. And there we need to be over there. There's the main farm. And you can really see how quickly it is just to be able to move through the map. See, we'll go back to where we want to be. And then what we're going to do, we're going to, just so we can do it quite easily, really, we're going to sit right into here. So, uh, I will uh, go and find that map again, or that shed again, which we know is all the way at the bottom of the scene graph, and there it is. Come back down. There you are. So I'm going to click on that one, and I'm going to, I want to copy it, or I want to select it, and I want to, it's almost like cutting and pasting from a, uh, from one folder to another. And it's very simple to do. We're just going to go uh, left control, and we're going to go B. And then we can just click where we want it to appear. And Bob's your uncle. Would you look at that? There she blows. Now, you may recognize this. This is the shed from Six Ashes uh, on the overgrown farm there. But I got a bit of a tin roof put on there. Uh, kind of filling in a few holes and making it all look that little bit more. No, a little bit more repaired. A little bit more loved, I think. So I brought the map in now or the shed into the map. And all I need to do is kind of make sure it fits really. I'm not maybe too happy. It's, it's kind of just lying in the middle of nowhere. So we can adjust this. We can again, using the X, Y and Z values, we can move it around. We can lift up and down. And all you got to do is really just kind of position it until you're happy with where it is there really. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to move it over here. It's a little bit of an angle on this ground here. So we're just going to maybe lower it down like that there. And then that kind of roughly in place we need to keep the shed level what we'd have to do is alter the terrain which is another thing that you can do in GE however with the most recent uh version of farming simulator there with the terrain adjustments available in game uh once you've got a save game going you cannot adjust the terrain inside giants editor you'd have to go into the game bring up the landscaping tool and kind of filter in around that way so what we'd have to do is make sure this shed is level and then you'd have to go in and adjust it in game and hope that you can get it all nice and level off there. So that's what you'd be looking into doing. And yeah, that's kind of like how you'd place it there. And then you go, do you know what? I'm still not very happy with that. So I'm just going to like slide it down a little bit. You can even, uh, you can even adjust the shed in question. If you look over to the attributes, attributes for the shed on the right hand side all of these are the the different uh, metadata that goes with it. So you've got your uh, X, Y, Z locations and you'll see as we move this around, those values begin to change a little bit because we're physically changing the position of this model on the map. Uh, further down, you've got the rotation as well. A similar thing applies there, how it's uh, rotated across its values. And so you'll see as I change that, those values begin to change there as well for the rotation X, Y, Z. But we don't want to change that one, so we're going to go Control Z. There we go. And then, yeah, the scale. You can actually make this bigger or smaller if you'd like to, so it can blend in a little bit. One is 100%, uh, imagine it that way. And then you can go bigger, so you could go 1.5 would be 150%. You can see it gets that half as wide again there. And you can do that for the, the width, the length, and the height. Or you can go smaller, 0.5. You can make this a nice little shed. And so you can really fit everything in that you need to based on what you, whatever your designs are. So now we've got this dainty little shed here, which like, hey, maybe that fits in a little bit better. And I'm just going to tilt that on its side. And that can be a nice little, it's a cute little shed there. Look at that. Uh, so yeah, that is like, that's a very, 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 very basics of how you're going to import a model into your farm and how you're going to be able to like manipulate it once it's inside there. The Giant Editor is a great tool. Uh, it gives you lots of different options to do lots of different things. You've just got to kind of slowly work at it and see how you can get on. Uh, that's all I did. And then I I don't do anything too complex. I do just make small changes to make sure that I can uh, kind of make a map fit my needs, really. And uh, if I'm doing a role play on there, I want to make sure that it kind of accommodates the role play and make sure that it, it, it really does uh, make that story even better and come to life. One thing I would say, 
if you are thinking about doing this to any map first of all if you uh if you are looking to kind of pass this on to anyone you first of all have to have to have to speak with the uh, map author there and see, seek permission before you edit anything and send it out if you're making an edit just for your own your own usage then uh typically i would say you are pretty good to do that one if you ever do choose to uh, want to release it to anybody else then of course the original author has to provide their consent to do so as with providing or, or using map assets from anybody else's work you need to make sure that you credit those uh authors uh, properly and also ask for the appropriate permission uh, with that being said we're going to leave this here so thank you ever so much for watching i have been simulation for the nation this has just been a very l small little insight into the very basic operation of giant head so if you have enjoyed don't forget to hit the like button subscribe let me know what you'd like to see if there's anything else within giant editor and we will see what we can do until that time though do stay safe enjoy what you're doing as always and we'll catch you